sample preparation for HPLC. I have here um, different samples, and then these are solid samples, and then those are our HPLC samples. So for instance, uh, you synthesize um, benzyl product, so you will run an HPLC on the product to know the purity of the sample. In addition, you are going to run also the original starting compound, which is benzoin in this case. So we started with benzoin as the reactant, and then we obtain a product, which is benzyl. So to determine if you actually obtain the product, we are going to run the reactant and then also the product. So weigh two milligrams each of the uh, samples. So benzoin reactant, I already weighed two milligrams and then the product uh, benzyl also two milligrams. And then say, for example, you have a, another reaction, another synthesis. For example, you synthesize aspirin product and then your starting compound is salicylic acid. You will do the same thing to determine the purity of the product from HPLC using HPLC. And then you are going to do the same thing. You're going to weigh the reactant two milligrams salicylic acid as the original reactant, and then the product aspirin, which I weighed already, aspirin product, and then two milligrams. So after weighing uh, two milligrams each of the sample, I will illustrate how to dissolve the sample so that we can do the injection in the HPLC. So for example, the benzoin reactant, we are now going to dissolve that in HPLC grade acetonitrile, two mils of the acetonitrile HPLC grade solvent, and then we are going to dissolve the benzoin in two mils. I'm using a calibrated pipette. This is one mil, so I'm going to use two of this. So one mil. So I'm making one milligram per mil of solution to inject to the HPLC. So that's two mils, two milligram per two mils or one milligram per ml. So this is the sample, but I'm going to vortex this. Next step is to filter that solution, one milligram per ml, into the HPLC vial, a small HPLC vial and then we're gonna use a 0.45 micron of a filter. So it's called a PTFE 0.45 micrometer micron to filter out any undissolved particles in that solution so that we can maintain the integrity of the HPLC column because the HPLC column is expensive. So I'm gonna use a plastic uh, syringe and then I'm going to withdraw a mil of the sample. So this uh, syringe is about a mil. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to attach it to the filter. And then I'm going to filter it through the HPLC vial by pushing it down. Okay. So this is now our sample, the benzoin reactant. Benzoin reactant, I filtered through the HPLC vial. I'm going to cap it. So it's a special cap in a special vial for HPLC. And then I'm now going to label this as B and then reactant. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. So again, I'm going to do the same thing for the, the benzyl product, dissolve this sample in two mils of the HPLC grade solvent and do the same thing for salicylic acid and then for the aspirin. So this is now our um, HPLC instrument. And then our sample, we're gonna put it in the, in the plate. So there's a eight by five plate 
and there's like 40 slots and then I'm gonna so it's labeled it's color-coded actually as green in here so it's labeled as a one two three four five six seven eight and then a b c d e so I'm going to put it in the first slot which is green a1 a1 okay so uh, this can accommodate 120 vials so you can run a lot of samples because each one each plate is 40 slots and then there are three labeled as um, blue red and green so you can actually just rotate it like that so the HPLC is called high performance liquid chromatography or or high pressure liquid chromatography. So it has a flow rate, which is now, I set it as one mil per minute and the pressure is 47 bar. And then right now the combination of the solvents are A, B, C, D. So A is water, B is methanol, C is acetonitrile. So right now the solvent mixture is 80% acetonitrile, 20% water. For every chromatography, we have a mobile phase and a stationary phase. The mobile phase for the HPLC, there are three on top. So A is water, B is methanol, C is acetonitrile. So this is a reverse phase HPLC. The mobile phase or the moving phase is gonna be polar. For instance, water, methanol, and acetonitrile. So the pump is going to mix uh, any combination of two solvents or three solvents or just one just a single solvent so this is the pump and also has the ability to mix different combinations of solvents in here so this is actually a b c it's being mixed in here d is just a rinse we can do three combinations or two combinations or just one single solvent as the mobile phase so that's the um, strength of this instrument because you can use different kind of combinations and you can also do what is called a gradient meaning that you are changing the concentration of the mobile phase over time so this is the column so this, the stationary phase meaning the adsorbent is in here so this is where the separation happens so this actually it's inside the steel casing and then the solvent goes from here to here and then it's going to be detected by the detector so we set the wavelength to 214 nanometer and 667 nanometer that's the visible this is the UV there's also what is called the auto sampler and you will see later once we run it that it automatically would inject into the uh, into the column and then after it comes out of the detector it's going to go so there's a Teflon tubing in here we have what is called a fraction collector. So it's gonna go to each tube and you can program it when to collect and what peaks to collect. And then if you are not collecting, it would just go to the waste, which is actually to the back in here. So the waste goes in here in this container. So the solvent that we are pumping in goes eventually to the, to the waste. So I'm going to put the uh, cover. So it's actually temperature controlled. Uh, the, the column is under uh, certain temperatures. I'm so I'm now going to put the cover. So right now it's just going through the waste and then the drops are actually coming out in here. So it's not collecting into the tubes. So from the fraction collector, it's actually dripping in here into these tubings and then eventually it's gonna go to the waste container. Okay, so it's coming out from here and then goes down in here and then it goes to this tubing, Teflon tubing, and then the drops are coming out in here. The instrument is controlled by a software 
called Chromelion 7. And this instrument actually is from Thermo Scientific and it's uh, Ultimate 3000. So this instrument is HPLC Ultimate 3000 and from this company, Thermo Scientific. And we have the pump again, we have the pump, we have the auto sampler, and then we also have a detector. It's called a diode array detector, DAD. And then we have the um, fraction collector. So four features of this instrument are the pump, the auto sampler, the diode array detector, and then the fraction collector. So this instrument is powered or controlled by the software called Chromelion 7. So that's the um, icon. And then once you click it, it will now show this. So this is where you can uh, program whatever mixture you want. And there's really a lot of uh, tasks to do to be able to set up the correct parameters or to optimize the conditions for, your, for the HPLC. So we are going to run. So on data, so if I click data, on data I already set up the run. This is for OCHEM lab, experiment five. And then I'm now going to run the reactant. I put the sample on green A1. So that's the slot, green A1. So we have a method. So I already set that up and then we are now going to click resume to run. This is real time. So we are now going to go in here. So this will show you uh, the injection. So we will see the peaks. So right now the uh, auto sampler is getting ready. So it will pick up the sample. So there's a septum, the needle goes inside the sample and will pick up the liquid, it will pick up the solution. So right now, uh, the sample position is in green A1, and then the temperature is 15 degrees C, and then the injection volume is 10 microliters. So that's the loop, that's the volume of the sample that will be injected into the column. So now it's injecting. This is the syringe that is going to inject the sample into the column. So that's done. And then now we're gonna watch the run. So this is now the run, so it injected from here, and now we're gonna see where the peaks will come out. So I set the run to about three minutes and then it should accommodate or it should, we should be able to see the peak or the peaks before three minutes. Otherwise we have to make adjustments. So one peak corresponds to one sample if you have the conditions optimized. Two peaks, two samples, so now the peak came out. So right now it's, um, it's collecting the fractions and we should see if the peak is coming up. So the peak came out, so it's actually collecting uh, in the fraction collector. So I set it to three minutes and there really is just one peak coming out. 
and the baseline is clean and it's flat and it's gonna stop at three minutes so right now the peak came out at around uh, between 1.4 to 1.6 minutes so it's about 1.47 minutes approximately So one peak means, uh, assuming that you have the conditions optimized, that means that one peak corresponds to one component in your sample that we injected. So it's going to stop at three minutes. So right now it's 2.78. And then it's going to go to the next sample which is now the um, the product okay it's done and then um, it's now going to so now it's going to the next sample that I put on the uh, in the carousel so it's now going it's now getting ready to inject into the column. <coughs> so this uh, this needle will move and then that's the needle that will inject into the column. So it already injected into the column, so zero injection. And now we're going to wait for the peak or peaks to come out in here. So uh, we are going to compare the original and then the product and see and determine the purity of the sample. That's how we use the HPLC to determine um, the or how you can monitor your completion of the reaction before the reaction and after the reaction, meaning the reactant and then the product. So you always have a reference, always have a comparison so you know what's going on when you're doing synthesis. So if you are comparing with the original sample, something has to come out at the same spot, which is about 1.47 minutes. So if there's a peak that comes out, meaning that we have still, so for instance, in this case, we still have the original sample. So that's the original sample. So you run it immediately after the, there's a little bit of a peak in here, that's an impurity. And then now we have the other peak. So that means that we have a major peak in this case, uh, about one point, that's about less than 1.8 minutes. And then there's a little guy in here, and then um, less than 50% is the original sample. So again, it went down to the baseline. And again, we are, the fraction collector is now uh, collecting that um, absorption band, so you can actually, um, program the fraction collector so that you are collecting each of the peak and then in, in, in the tube. So it's going to move according to how you program it. So you can see the drops in here. So it's going to collect in each tube. So you can also analyze the fractions that you obtain and then you can, you can also evaporate the solvent and then analyze the fractions that you obtain. So typically you can separate the peaks using this method.